This is a Tattoo V4 1400 milliamp hour 6S battery, and it's one of the most popular drone batteries on the market right now. This is a China Hobby Line Speedy Pizza 1200 milliamp hour 6S battery, and it's known as one of the best budget batteries. There are better batteries from Tattoo and China Hobby Line. There's the version 5 tattoos that are out right now and the black label China Hobby Line batteries. And you might be asking, well, why didn't you review these? And well, boys, it's because I'm broke. And these are the batteries that I had. Um, but they're also really, really common batteries. You might have these batteries or you might even be interested in buying them because they are still for sale. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna be using my Wayne Giles ESR meter to check the internal resistance of these batteries when they're brand spanking new, fresh out of the box. Now this isn't gonna tell us too much because the internal resistance fresh out of the box isn't gonna be where the battery is gonna land here after a few charges, after a few cycles. There is always a little bit of a fluctuation after a few charges on a new battery, but I wanna check it before and check it after so that we get a good benchmark of how these cells actually look. I'm also gonna be showing the maximum amp rating uh, for these batteries. That's a cool feature of the Wayne Giles ESR meter. I'm not going to get too much into my testing or anything like that, but uh, here's the result. You guys can take a close look at it um, and let me know what you think. So I'm also going to be doing some testing using an iCharger X6, um, which may be more recognizable IR readings to a lot of people that are using their charger for their internal resistance readings. Keep in mind that iCharger is going to be a little more accurate than maybe say ISDT or some of the other chargers. But testing your battery multiple times can help you get an average and maybe get a little closer to a true internal resistance measurement, or at least something that you can use to keep better track of your batteries. Also, internal resistance isn't the only thing to help us accurately keep track of how good a battery is. Uh, this iCharger can do individual cell capacity measuring. So I'm going to do some charges and some 30 amp continuous discharges uh, because that's what it's capable of and see how it holds up. And if the individual cells start to fluctuate after discharging or even just after charging. Now, what you were just watching was a charge graft, and the battery looked fine. Uh, the charge isn't all that interesting. But now you see how the graph looks, and we can go on to discharging, and you can see how the batteries really perform. All right, for this first one, we're just gonna do a 13 amp discharge. It's about a 10 C discharge. Since the packs are 1400 and 1200, I decided to split it right down the middle uh, instead of a 12 amp and a 14 amp. Uh, again, we're trying to discharge these at the same rate. That way it's an apples to apples comparison. These are gonna be flown on the same type of aircraft. So they should be treated the same with a discharge.
So both of the batteries held up really well under their discharge loads. Let's go ahead and throw them back on the ESR meter and see if they have evened out at all. And it looks like they have. Their voltages are all really close together and their IRs have also evened out. Now, before I get too much farther, I know a lot of people are going to ask, why are you comparing these two batteries against each other? Well, they actually both have about the same surface area. They're very nearly the same weight, only 11 grams off. And so they're going to be used on really similar aircraft. I think these are two perfect batteries to pit against each other. Okay, now on to the 30 amp discharge tests. The R line is definitely getting a little bit hotter than I would have liked to see. It performed well, it gave a lot of capacity, and I checked its IR, didn't show it, but uh, it was all uniform, it all looked really good, just like I'd expect a $41 battery to do. So this China Hobby Line Speedy Pizza battery performed super well as far as the temperature goes. It held a lot of capacity above the 3.6 volt range, uh, which is interesting because I would have expected such an inexpensive battery to have a higher internal resistance under load and produce more heat, but it just didn't. Now I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of being technical. Let's get out and rip.
Okay, so both batteries performed super well through all of my flights and neither had significant voltage sag while I was hitting them with those hard throttle punches. I will say that the R-Line is not twice as much battery as the Speedy Pizza. I would definitely spend my money on Speedy Pizza batteries if I was just doing some freestyle. Since I do cinematography and I do need that little bit of extra capacity, I will be using the R-Line version 4.0s on my cinematography rigs. Anybody who's flying a Cinewhoop for money knows what I'm talking about. You really need those extra seconds. Uh, but it's just not worth twice as much as the Speedy Pizza battery. Hey, if you're still here, you're awesome. Please keep being awesome and hit the like button for me. Subscribing means a huge deal. And let me know in the comment section if you want me to make a full detailed video on internal resistance and even make a graph so that you can reference your own batteries at home and know if they're good or bad. Well, right on guys, thanks for watching and keep ripping.